Hello and welcome back to another quick tutorial. First of all, thank you for your feedback. And as requested, we are looking today in singletons. As you can see here, I already prepared an example and we can see two instances of singletons. One is like the one is like the traditional way in Rust how to create one and the second one is contributing specifically to Godot and singletons and how to register them. But first we go to a very standardized way of singletons in Rust. Please note that the source code can be found on my GitHub repository. So you can also look into that one by yourself if you want to. Um, so what we need is we need dedicated imports. We need the lazy lock and we need the mutex. We just define a standard struct for that, which is acting like the singleton and we try to access then the data there if we want to, and we just try to add new strings to the data and we at the end we try to print them, as you can see here. Now the more important part is actually, and that's the critical one, is actually the instance itself. So what we're gonna do is we create a static variable, example singleton, put it in a lazy log and in a mutex of the struct, what we just defined, and then initialize it. So the lazy log is required in order to make it um, synchronous so that it's thread safe. And the mutex is actually that we don't get any race condition. So a race condition is just something two, two things try to access the same uh, memory at the same time. How we use that, therefore we just go in this player class, for example. And here you can see that we need to get the example singleton. We lock it so that we get the right access to it and the read access if we want to. Um, and then we just check for it if it's possible to lock it. And then we start adding a new value and printing them out. If this looks a bit too verbose for you, you can also directly call the lock and then just unwrap it. But please keep in mind that this is not very safe and this one would then panic if the unwrapping would fail. The benefit of it would be just for ergonomics that you just directly store it in a uh, or assign it in a variable and then just execute the method um, directly underneath. As you can see here you have also the full access to it. Okay, so far that was a basic singleton implementation in Rust. Now let's look into how to deal with it in Godot specifically. Therefore, I prepared the Godot singleton um, file where we actually do kind of a very similar thing. The only difference is that this time we don't need to use the mutex and the lazy log. As you can see here, we derive a new Godot class from the base class object. Again, um, we call it my Godot singleton with a base. And then <clears throat> we have, as usually, our Godot API macro on top and the function, what we call print, so that we are able to call that. And all what this does, of course, is printing just the warning to the Godot editor, what we saw initially um, of the video. But now the important part comes about how to register the singleton because with Godot it's a bit different. In Godot, we need actually to register then the singleton with dedicated methods. Therefore, let's heading back to the librs file and see where and how to do that. So we needed to extend the library, the extension library for the Rust extension, what we defined always as an entry kind of. And then we define here, because you have different entry um, points, what get called, you see here on level init. So that gets when, for example, certain resources are loaded. In that particular case, we say when the initialization of the scene um, is completed, then we just execute it. And as you can see here, init level has is an enum with a couple of values. So you can have core, server, scene, and editor. And of course, we want, in that case, the scene to look into it. And then we just create with the engine a new registration of our singleton 
with the proper type and we allocate it. As this is a manual memory allocation, we also need to ensure that we clean that up. Therefore, in the dinit, we ensure that we fetch our singleton directly and if it exists, we unregister that and free the memory again. Of course, free cannot be called multiple times, so please keep in mind this is kind of manual memory management. In order to access it, just call the engine singleton, get the singleton and pass the proper string to it. And when you pass that one, it should of course reflect the one what you are used for the registration. And then at the end, you can extract the go.object, object, try to cast it to your singleton and then use bind depending on if you want to mutate it or not, and then call the proper method. I hope the video was useful. Thank you for watching. See you next time.